This is the first time in history that you can make money owning a Land Rover for a year. April 2021, we purchased this Land Rover Defender 90S in Chicago. At that time, we purchased the Land Rover for just under the MSRP of right around $58,000. We have now owned the 90S through four seasons. We have also put 12,500 miles on this Defender. And today, we're going to recapture that year of ownership. You could try to play it, but you're never going to beat me. Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy. Bloody hands stain from the people who deceive me. Muddy hands break through the chains, go free me. Looking for change, looking for pain. Pulling a mob, pushing a train. I'll never stop, stick to a lane. Pick up the pieces and go rearrange. Yeah. I'll be the best above all the rest, put me to the test. Yeah. Expect nothing less, you check as I'm chess, what's happening next? Yeah. He got the venom, a tangible weapon, no coming in second. This life is a lesson. He got a new engine from pain, that's a blessing. New focus, no guessing, just bold an obsession. All in his possession, you got the red. I leave an impression and take a redemption. Just kill no discretion. Your mind is a weapon. 11 11 is time for progression. Oh. Hey guys, welcome back to the It feels so good to be back after one year of ownership. One year of ownership on this Defender. It's crazy. We've been gone all winter and it's just like six months of ownership just flew right on by. Yeah, we bought this Defender before the 90 was popular. Yeah, we. it's still not. We barely have seen any of them. The, well, that's a whole other issue. Yeah. We haven't seen a lot of cars yeah. in today's uh, auto market, but we bought this vehicle before the auto media got a hold of it and made reviews on it. And today we're going to recap our year. Yeah, actually one year. Like, I think we might be the only people to own one for a year now that are on YouTube. So I think we should start going through some of the issues that we had, starting with seat rails, speaker. Uh, Let's just get into it. One of the first issues that we discovered kind of as new owners in the Defender, uh, this was a handful of thousands of miles in, uh, I would say probably five to 6,000 miles. As we were moving around in this seat, the driver's seat specifically, there was a clicking that would occur. Uh, as, you, as your body weight transferred, there was a clicking. Well, lo and behold, there was a recall that came out from Land Rover. There's actually two associated with this specific 90S. I can't guarantee if that was part of the 110 or not. There's obviously some different seat rails associated with the 90 versus the 110 because of having to get in the back. Uh, but anyways, what was discovered, and you're going to see a trend here, so make sure you stick with this because we're going to get to the trend and our theory after we wrap up these handful of different items. Uh, after the seat rail was replaced, that clicking went away. And what was found by the technician, what they documented on our paperwork, is that the screw, which had never been touched before, was stripped out and wasn't torqued down all the way. I don't know if you guys remember this, but we made a video of picking up the Defender, the, the reveal video that we got a Defender 90. And as we were driving at home when we made that video straight from the dealership, within about five minutes, we noticed a rattling noise in the speakers, uh, mainly when there was some bass in the song. We realized that if we stuck our hand on this speaker, we just let, rested our hand on it, the rattling would be entirely gone. So we addressed this to the dealer that was local to us, and they took apart that panel and they found out that there was a screw that was stripped out from the factory. There's another issue that we discovered, and I've actually been in conversation with people on the internet about this specific issue. And what that was is my wife is the one that actually called this out first. I was noticing it, but just making the choice to ignore it more or less, uh, was there was a crinkling on both sides up here on the windshield. And my wife described it, which it was a very good description. It sounded like sand, like you're behind a dump truck and sand is hitting your windshield even though there's no vehicle around to be hitting the windshield, that is the noise that would be made once you exceeded about 55 miles per hour. And it would do this pretty much every time we drove the vehicle. It didn't do it from the factory, but after some use, this was a continual issue. Now, I brought this up to the dealership and they took the trim off and they looked at things and they determined that maybe they wanted to dive a little deeper into this issue, but they didn't because we had to replace a windshield. So there's kind of the first flaw of having the Defenders. If we wanted an OEM windshield, it would have been months out. And if you want other specific items, maybe a headlight or a tail light, there's a lot of items that in this current market that are specific to the Defender are hard to get. 
So we did go with an aftermarket windshield that has all the goodies that the factory one has. Lo and behold, after that windshield was replaced, again, the factory windshield, that noise has went away and hasn't been back since. Now we're gonna get into the Pivi Pro, which is pretty much the next group of issues that we had, but you can see with that first group, it was a pretty good pattern we had going there, all of which had to do with how the vehicle was produced in the factory that it came from. Yeah, so new factory, it's, it's built side by side, it being the Defender is built side by side with the Discovery, yep. the full size one. And I, I'm blanking on the town that this is, but it's where Volkswagen's got a factory. I believe another automaker has a factory there as well. And it's a smaller community. Yeah. So by the time Land Rover put their footprint there and built this beautiful factory, all the workers that had that skill set were gone. Now this is where my theory and opinion comes in. So we have this new vehicle that's going down the assembly line for the first time, being assembled by people that have never been in this trade. Like last week they were working at Arby's, and yep. now this week they're assembling cars, holding a, a socket for the first time. Mm -hmm. And they're stripping out screws and over-torquing things and under-torquing things. Yep. And, and we have been to the F-150 factory. Yeah, we have. I don't know if you recall this or not, but they would hold a wrench on and the wrench would be held on until a green light would come on. Yeah. And then they'd hold, take the wrench off. And that's how, like, like it's foolproof, right? Well, even an F-150, my work truck, a 2022, I just changed the mirror out on it. And even that had a nut for the mirror that was halfway down the threads. Yeah, it wasn't doing anything. Completely seized in place. See, this is why they tell you when you go to tour the F-150 factory, no video recording. Yeah, no video recordings. So there could be some build quality issues. If you think of them as major issues, I don't think of them as major issues. I think they were all easily resolved. Very easily resolved. And, and it's reminded. very nice that the dealer is so helpful and so kind along the process. They're, yeah. they're, and then they just give you one of these nice brand new vehicles to enjoy Pre while yours is getting serviced. Pre-COVID, that was a big perk that you'd, yeah. you'd pull in and you'd get whatever the latest and greatest JLR brand vehicle is. Mm -hmm. Now it's kind of whatever they find in the back of the lot they're giving you, uh, at least in our area. Let's get onto that Pivi Pro. Here we are in the front seat of the Defender where we have our second group of issues, all having to do with this display right here, which is powered by the new Pivi Pro. The Pivi Pro came out in the Defender. That's the vehicle it was first launched and now it's across the entire board on every single JLR product. But as I said, it did start in this and now it has a bigger screen as well. So this was the first edition. Now the second one, the screen goes up and covers this area and covers this area right here as well. But I don't know if you guys remember in a previous video we had, we showed a demonstration of what it was doing and it would just go black and not turn on. Like it, you, it, a lot of people say to restart the car, restart the system. Either way, we couldn't get it to come back on and this happened multiple times. We ended up bringing it to the dealer where it, it, they said that it didn't need an over the air update and everything was up to date, but they ended up finding a short in the system and they hardwired an update in, has not been an issue since. But what is very cool about this thing, other than that small issue that we had, is just the over the air updates are fantastic. You know, you'll see in the forum somebody saying, oh, today we have a wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. And you come out here and look at that. Yes, you do. And the day before that, it was wired Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So just, just cool things like that. It's very similar to, to uh, I shouldn't say a Tesla because their tech is much more advanced, but it's just fun walking out to have some new features the next day. Piggybacking off of what Austin said, I do truly enjoy that Pivi Pro and that Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And just hitting on that for a moment. So my wife has an Apple and I have an Android. Both of our phones are synced onto the Defender and you can set up which one takes priority and whatnot, which is slick, but the even cooler thing is, and I haven't been in a car, there may be a car that works this seamlessly, but I have not seen it yet, or at least experienced it. My wife could be playing and or Apple Music, and I could be driving the vehicle and get text messages through Android Auto or a phone call, and the way that the Defender and that Pivi Pro system just intertwines and intermixes and goes in and out of both the Apple and Android and bounces back to what it was doing before, it works pretty darn slick. And I, I don't know, I view it as a perk. And what Todd just said goes to show that it is possible in this day and age to have a spouse that does not have both Apple or both Android. It is mind blowing, but it works. All blue messages don't matter. 
I'm choosing to make this clip by what I think are some of the best looking taillights on the auto market right now, especially when they're illuminated like they are right now. Anyways, what we have discovered is according to JD Power and Associates, let me just back up here for just one second. I asked my wife as she's looking through cars, seeing what looks good on the market right now, if we were to replace your Defender, what would it be? And she was looking at some Jaguars, right? But she said, coming across an article, well, it says this Jaguar is extremely unreliable. Why would I ever want to buy that? I said, honey, we've owned your Defender for one year right now. It's been to the shop three times. According to JD Power & Associate, that makes this one of the most unreliable vehicles on the road today. She said, yeah, what? What do you mean? I said, honey, do you view your Defender as unreliable? She's like, no, those were all minor, stupid, silly things that were easy to fix. Is the Defender unreliable? That pretty much summarizes the issues or complaints. I don't even know if I could classify them as complaints on our year of ownership. But what we haven't touched base on are just some of the more trivial things. Do we still enjoy this vehicle? This is my wife's daily. I would absolutely purchase this vehicle again. I would purchase three of them if I knew the market was going to do what it did and, and I'd and sell them all. Here's but. something that's really wild, okay? So we're right next to a dealership right now that has pretty much this thing's biggest competitor right now, which is a two-door Ford Bronco. They have one at the dealer right next to us, listed for $77,000, a first edition with like no miles on it. The first edition options in the Ford Bronco are similar to the entry level options of the Defender. And I arguably think the Defender looks like a much more expensive, much fancier, much more uh, daily, uh, daily driver type. Of, I, don't, I don't know how it's to a, say it. The next more livable car. Yeah. yeah, it's the next level, the next level of a vehicle. It's, it's more refined. Yeah. Uh, but yet it still has a lot of those similar capabilities. Mm -hmm. Two follow-up statements on what you just said. This vehicle has been described, or um, not described, but it has been confused with being a Bronco, meaning someone walks up to my wife and says, hey, I really love your Bronco. And typically this is a guy, and the guy walks away with his shoulders down and his head down because he got told up by a, a, a woman that he doesn't know his vehicles. Um, also, what I would say with this compared to a Bronco is exactly reiterating what you just said. I would take a basic option, a no option Defender over a fully option Bronco any day That's week. That's in the uh, daily driver sense, I should say, or, or in the, the weekend car sense. It, the Bronco is going to have a much larger aftermarket thing if you are strictly into off-roading. I think there's no doubt about that. Absolutely. So still love the way this Defender looks. It, it has a design that is gonna be on the top of the SUV lineup for quite some time. That's both exterior and interior. Absolutely. A, a few other things I can tell you is the storage on the Defender is amazing. However, if you or your significant other is uh, maybe a bit of a hoarder, it's got so much storage, like especially up on the dashboard, that you can just pile sunglasses and bottles of water and cheeseburgers and french fries. It's almost like you know that from experience. And the storage that's under the armrest, you can put more bottles of water and towels and gloves and hats. And in the doors, you can put more bottles of water and cans and candy canes and candy corn. And it just keeps going and going. There's a lot of storage, which it can be super user friendly and it can also just become this hoarding vehicle. It made it through Grandma Ida's plane trip, so it, sure it can did. make it through anything. Let's talk about that for a second. So we've been with the 90 for a year. This is two doors. Uh, I think it looks completely stellar, but there are certain angles when the light just hits it right, it looks like, like honey, I shrunk the Defender, right? Yeah, going around the roundabout, you can see that every now and then if you're in the car behind but it. But there's other times when it just absolutely captures your eye and you're like, that thing is cool. Yeah. And it does turn quite a few heads. I was even, we were zipping down the highway yesterday and just out of the corner of my eye, you can see that people are staring at it as they're driving by. Because it looks like a massive tank because it is, once again, bigger than the Bronco and the Wrangler. Like, yeah. The thing's huge. Yeah, it, it's super comfortable with that in mind. There's plenty of room. I love the comfort of it even in the 90 daily driving it it's comfortable and we're on coils i'm, I'm actually uh the, the 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 platform that the defender's on is obviously supposed to be an off-road vehicle right absolutely so on air suspension that's going to give you more confidence both on the off-road as well as on-road 
but the coils like aren't bad. I don't regret that at all. I'd be lacking the confidence and reliability with the air though. There is that as time goes on. Obviously, every person that drives an air suspension is going to think it's better than a coil. Yeah. Like, it, it, it's just plain as day. Until they spend 11 grand to fix it. Right, yeah. When it hits 100,000 <laughs> miles and everything's leaking and valves are stuck and whatever else. Yeah. But anyways, I don't regret the coils. I no, would, I think I, they're great. I think they're great. It's got a good stance to it, too. Gas mileage-wise. So, uh, last summer, we were at like 20.4 miles per gallon. We got into wintertime, started using Land Rover's app, which works great. You can set the climate, you can start your vehicle wherever it is, as long as both you and the vehicle has a cell signal. Uh, you can also look at your past journeys on that app, uh, what your MPGs were, where you went, how long it took, stuff like that. I don't know if that has any use other than you can see it took you 23 minutes to get to work one day and 27 the next. Uh, Anyways, in the winter time, using that app, using the heated seats, using the heated steering wheel, having the fan cranked up, uh, our gas mileage was as low as 17. Yeah, that's not very good. So we are starting to tick our way back up to that 20. So I would think that if you aren't driving this vehicle in the winter on the four cylinder, this is the four cylinder, you could expect 20 miles per gallon. Definitely not the vehicle you wanna purchase if you are worried about the current gas prices because it takes premium too. It does take premium, that's true. It has a big old tank too. It's got yeah. like a 20, uh, 23 gallon How much does it tank. cost to fill up here? Uh, filling up at Costco yesterday, April 2022 in Minnesota was $85. Okay, and our gas prices here in Minnesota are very low and Costco is just holy when it comes to gas prices as you well. You have to go to Costco. If you don't buy your gas at Costco, like insider, like tip especially if you have a vehicle with premium fuel it's usually 70 cents to 90 cents it, i've seen it as much as a dollar 30 per gallon less at costco than the neighboring gas stations and another great app to use if you don't have any costco near you is get upside this is not sponsored by get upside but i use it on the daily and within the last year i've saved about 330 dollars on it so it's a great app when we talk about the size of the defender 90 as we continue to get towards wrapping this video up. We're gonna get there. And we'll get there We're gonna point. get there. We might. I promise. Hopefully. I don't regret the, the, the size either. So front seats are obviously plenty comfortable. <laughs> I've sat in the back seat twice and I will fully admit at six feet tall, I don't wanna spend a lot of time in that back seat. It's not super comfortable. Um, and a lot of that is more the sitting height position than the leg room or anything else. It's just the seat is kind of awkward with the height of it is what I observed. I spent about uh, two trips with 45 minutes each way in the back seat. And I was like, yeah, this kind of sucks. A little bit. Um, so this is really a vehicle for two people, in my opinion. If you had, uh, you know, some younger kids that were out of car seats, but not teenagers yet, that could be pretty accommodating so they could help themselves to get back up into it. But at the end of the day, this is an amazing vehicle for driving around town, parallel parking, parking, uh, pulling U-turns. It's super easy to maneuver because All right. of that short wheel blade. I'm dragging this on. I think we're done here. I think we're done here. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the video here today on Performance on Wheels. One year of ownership might be the last video on the Defender. Who, Never know. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, but we need some comments down below because he needs a new car and he keeps trying to buy one that's like not being produced right now. So comments down below on what kind of car he should get. But see you guys around. Enjoy that. <laughs>